Hello? Today we are going to solve Sava Short Contest 2, whatever it is. Without further discussion, let's just hit the virtual participation in one minute. Nice, let's go. Polycarpus analyzes a string abracadabra. And first step it's only A. On the case tab, he concatenates two copies of this string and inserting the kth character of the alphabet between them. Okay, this is a very well known procedure and it gives uh CTZ it just gives the CTZ of current number. Mm -hmm. The corpus wrote down the string he got after 30 steps of the given algorithm. 30? Ah, okay. And chooses two non-empty substrings of it. Your task is to find the length of the longest common substring of the two substrings selected by Polycarpus. Okay, so... We have a string. We have two strings. And we need them... And we need to find two equal substrings of them. So, actually... What is required for these strings to be equal? <clears throat> it is required that if we start with position i and position j, first of all, of course, the power of 2 in these two numbers should be equal. So they should have the same parity. What then? Okay, so the key observation, I believe, is that is to look at the maximum power of 2 in this string. So assume that you have some number i in which the power of 2 is k and some other number j in the same string whose power of 2 is also k. Then i plus j is also divisible by 2 to the k, but it is odd number times 2 to the k plus odd number times 2 to the k. So actually this number is divisible by 2 to the k plus 1. So there is a bigger power of 2. So what we really need to do is to find the maximum power of 2 in these two strings. And it should be the same. It should be on the same position. So the only the required, the necessary and sufficient condition is for these two strings to have the same length, to have the same maximum power of 2, and for it to be in the same position. Yeah. So what we need to do is we need to iterate over all possible maximum powers and go as much as possible to the left or to the right.
Mm -hmm. So this is an, a rather easy problem. So let's start with our nice template. So we also need to name spaces 3D and include some nice packages like you know stream and algorithm. Maybe we'll need vector, maybe we'll need CMAT. This is for the future. So the only thing we need to do here is to Reopen Yeah, and uh, all tests Where in solve tests, we solve tests by one by one. By one. Nice. And here we need to solve test. How do we solve a test? We ask, ah, we need to read four integers. And otherwise we print the answer. And the answer is, well, it's definitely an int. So we just need to find integer answer. Let's go. So we need to iterate over. First of all, we need to find the maximum power of two. In both. So is it true? L let's look at the situation. So we have some maximum power of two. Hmm. Also, there is second maximum power of two and it can be either here or here or both of them can be. And then the same is here. So if they are the same, then we only need to check x. Let me think. Fine, let's just iterate over all possible powers of two. 
it's 30 steps. So, so 30 steps means that it is 29th power. Okay, so let's find all possible positions of this power of 2. So it should be at least L1. So, okay, first of all, it should be at most R1, R1. So we need to take R1 to I positions to the left. It is the rightmost position. No, it's not correct. It is not correct. Well, it is kind of correct, but if it is even, then I need to subtract 1. Then I need to take PL1, which is what? Which is L1 rounded up. Okay, it is L1 rounded up. Mm -hmm. It is L1 rounded up. So to round up some quotient, I need to first subtract 1, and then divide by i, 2 to the power of i, and then add up, add 1. This is how I round up things. Yes. And again, if it is odd, if it is odd, I need to add 1. So now the same thing is done for that second a segment. Nice. So if PL1 is... Okay, also I want to make an int ans equals zero and in the end return ans. So if PL1 is greater than PR1, or PL2 is greater than PR2, then I continue. Yeah. So let's assume that they are not greater. So there exists at least one power of two of both kinds. Mm -hmm. Great. So now we need to construct some segments. We need to construct some segments. <sighs> Let's just do it easier. So I will need, I will take some vectors. So a vector segments one and segments two. Where vi is vector int. If PR1 minus PL1 is at most 1, this means I need to try both options. Else, I just take PL1 plus 1, because it will be the maximum possible segment of this type. So if... If... If there are at least three segments, then the middle of them is maximum possible. So the same for the second. Then I iterate over them. Okay, so I try both of them. How do I try both of them? 
I need to take uh the right position and the left position and subtract them. Now let's calculate the right position. How do I calculate it? It is minimum of right position in the first segment and in the second segment. Which is either R R minus R1 minus I1 or R2 minus I2. And the same is here, maximum of I1 minus L1 or I2 minus R2. But also, I need to cut it as also here is also minimum, and also I need to cut them both as the maximum power of two. So, for example, if we have number four, then I can take five, six, seven, but I cannot take eight. So, I really need to say that. It is at most this number in both cases. Okay, I believe this is done. Let's check it on this sample. Two, zero. wrong with you why and dance ah it's another source okay i also would like to test some other test let's check these ones for fir at first so here it's just three and zero no it's not correct why it says three When is it three? Okay, let's check it. Nice. So what is it? What does it say? It says I is one, so it's like two. Ah, of course, I need to take to multiply it. I one, I two, I two, I one. Yes, now it should work. No, no, it doesn't. Well, the numbers are huge because here I somehow failed to to calculate these numbers. For example, here I equals twenty eight. Okay, I don't know how to divide numbers sorry for that but this is an easy fix okay, now it's only yeah it still says three although how i equals one 
and i1 equals 3, so it's 6 in this segment. Yeah, for some reason it didn't cut. So this is 1. It should be at most 1. Ah, it should be plus here, maybe. And minus 1 here. Now it's 0. Well, now the vertex are just random. No, it should be plus 1. No, still no. Okay, how is it 2? It is 2 if I take 5, 6 and 3, 4. No, 5, 6 and 1, 2. So it should work for i equals 1. Okay, it's also just 3, 4 and 3, 4. They should work as 3, 4 and 3, 4. Why don't they? The answer is just one. What? Six minus four or four minus four. So this is zero. Okay. This is one. Oh man. Why do these errors keep being so random? Okay, two zero. But we still need some big test. <laughs> okay, let's try for example one thousand twenty three and one thousand twenty five. And for example one to 600. It should be 1. Yeah, it's 1. Now let's make some bigger example. It should be 599. Yeah. Now let's take this segment and add 1024 to it. It should be 600. It is indeed. Let's check. Mm, what is What would be an interesting test? The interesting test would be where the correct answer... The correct answer is always this maximum, isn't it? Ah, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, I, I got it. So the interesting answer is like... 1024 and 2047 and from 1 to 1024 yeah because it is impossible to find the optimal answer with 1024 it is 1023 because we take just all numbers all these numbers yeah yeah so i believe now that this solution should be nice and fine let's check it Why so slow? And so slow to get a verdict VA2, for example. Penalty. No, it's slow. This is an old problem. Okay, Polycarpus has T saves. The password for each save is a square matrix. Of what size? Ah, the sizes may vary. He has forgotten all passwords, so he needs to restore them. Prime numbers. Why so slow? Oh, 
all matrices turned out to be symmetrical. He knows the prime numbers. Answer test 16. This is not what I hoped for. Okay, there there is this rubbish, but it shouldn't change the answer, should it? Maybe this operation is done wrong. So I want to find the minimum number, which is at least L2 and which is divisible by this power of 2. Yeah, so, min k such that k is at least L and k is divisible by 2 to the power of t, for example, or i. So, this, this is L, this is 2 to the power of i. I would like to divide L by 2 to the i, so in this way I will find this number, but it might be equal to this one if L is divisible by 2 to the power of i. To prevent this, to find the strictly less number, I need to subtract 1, I subtract 1, then I divide, then I add 1. Well, why is, it, is this happening? Oh, random bug.
So first of all, let's repeat again our key observations. What's happening? Why don't I see this? Pity forces, I love you. It might as well just stop working now. No, it works. Okay. Do you work? Yeah. So he wrote down the string he got after 30 steps. No way that this doesn't work because, for example, um, the maximum power of 2 below this number is just 2 to the 29th power. I don't understand it because I have a solution and I proved it. I just proved it. Why doesn't it simply work if I proved it? So by part by part. So first of all, the maximum power of two is only one in any string. This is true. The second thing says that Let's check something else, for example, uh, this and uh, this. It should be 6, I believe. It should be 6. Yes, it's just 6. Okay, let's subtract 6 also. Oh, this is 7 now. But it shouldn't be 7. Why is it 7? How is it 7? If this is seven, when I is zero, what? Ah, uh -huh. it's nonsense. It's Okay, the chest is fine. Okay, 
it says that we check i equals 2. Ah, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. So these numbers are odd. These numbers are odd. So actually, if it is at most two, we th put this and otherwise this. So this is the correct approach. Why didn't I see this before? Such a stupid mistake. So let's check that I did everything right. So if I have two consecutive odd numbers, then I take this. Otherwise I add two to the list of them. Yeah, this seems legit. This seems legit. Mm, so dumb. So dumb. Okay, now it works better. Not better. Well, but this is shame. This is shame. If Polycarpus have C T saves, each of them is a square matrix. Did you also get wrong answer 16? Okay, this is unknown. Okay, so the question is for for every there is a prime number in the first row and the first column. The matrix is symmetrical. So we need to find several primes such that each of these numbers is prime and this is symmetrical this is a symmetrical matrix okay and what is the length the length is not big actually only five numbers only five digits so this is some sort of brute force. Maybe, maybe this is some sort of brute force. First of all, we may, we, we may notice that if n is at most 1, then the answer is it guaranteed that these numbers are primes. Yes. Then I'd say simply one. But n is at least two, yes. Ah, it's at least two, yeah. Okay. Ten, ten, yeah, ten numbers. So we need firstly to find all prime numbers, which are at most these. Okay, I think we can trade over all primes in this column 
because we are only interested in primes which start which consist of only ones threes sevens and nines there shouldn't be many of them there should be many of them but even there are many of them it's four to the fifth power which is like one thousand we can even iterate over all pairs of such numbers. Moreover, this number, this digit is fixed, so actually it will be a, in total. Actually, we don't need to iterate a lot. We don't need to iterate a lot. Or, no, we need to iterate a lot. So we already know this and this. then we can fix these digits and there are 4 to the 4 equals 256 ways to do it and then we also know these digits then for example we can iterate over all possible primes in this row <sighs> and there might, might, might be not many of them I don't know Maybe we don't, don't need to do it. Maybe we can just go row go through the rows one by one. Can then be really huge? Yeah, maybe it can. I need. I think we need to make some simulation. So here we remove this, we read the number, uh, and we print the fine dance. Right, so here we need a long one. Here we need an integer. So, first of all, we make an Eratosthenes sieve. Artasphena sieve, which is easy to write. Okay, let's assume that there is a sieve. Also, it's like VVI, VVVI actually. So assume that it found the primes. Yeah. Vi uh, primes. Then we say that. So V says the following. Assume that we fixed the first. 
five digits. I assume that we fixed the first five digits of the prime. Yeah, so D equals five, D equals six, okay? So six is the minimum number of digits, which is impossible. Now we say that it can start from any digit from from any number from zero to ten to the power of d minus one. So So we say that v0 dot resize t and v0 zero zero equals primes. Then we iterate over all d's. We iterate over the last digit. Here we go. So we iterate over the first block and over the last digits. No, I don't like it. I don't like it. What I would like to do is say that we did a resize new t and then then I, I would like to say that we iterate over over this of course. Yeah, so we look at v d, d minus 1 u, but then we need to take the maximum digit of this number. Okay, let's just say y equals 1 million. So this is the first part. Okay, we iterate over all numbers here. So we take this number. We divide it by y divided by yeah. Let, let's make an example for example d equals one so we fixed zero digits so there are five digits to fix so this should be not minimum it should be Yeah, so d equals 1 means that we already fixed 0 digit, digits and we need to fix the last one. So we need to take y over the already fixed digits, which is t. And do we need to divide by this number? No, we need to divide by new t, I believe.
Yeah. Okay, we divide it by it, by it, and this is the last digit. So now we say that D, V, D, uh, U times 10 plus this, dot push back, right. Fine, so now all the primes are in these blocks. So now we need to ask ourselves Mm. So we, we take no. First of all, we need to take the length of this number n. We need to take this length, and to do it, we need string to run the procedure to string of n. Actually, I believe this will go well in this function. Good size. <clears throat> Nice. Great. So if uh, a dot size equals k, we return one so this is easy otherwise we need to return ants in the end <clears throat> to do that we we know the first a dot size primes and we need to iterate over the the next one to do it let's construct the number okay we need some sort of Power of powers of ten. So we say PT dot resize uh, D one PTI equals PTI minus one times ten. Mm -hmm. So here we construct the beginning. How do we construct the beginning? We iterate over all numbers in array A and we say that beginning <coughs> is beginning times 10 plus some digit. What is this digit? This digit is some digit in number i in order to get which we need to divide i by the number of digits after it and percent 10. What is number of digits after it? It is simply some power of 2. It is um, for example if a is fixed and a is not a is fixed, but what is fixed? When a is k minus 1, we need to divide by 1. So it should be k minus a dot size minus 1. And this number is taken here. Well, after that, we iterate over all possible primes in sieve dot b 
for each. So what is, what is the fixed number of digits? It's a dot size, the number of digits. Then we also need the length, of course. We need the length. I got it. I got it. We don't need to take a dot size because we need to take like a dot size plus d minus k minus one. Madness. Let's continue. Then we take. the beginning okay that's it and we simply try a dot push back j then answer plus equal find answer recursive for a and k and we pop back well well let's check Ah, I didn't. What? Why is it one million? Okay, it should be less than the... So, of course it is zeros because I didn't... First of all, let's like make some artificial test. It should be one. Yes. Now I need to make the C for of Eratosthenes. Let's do the easier one because I don't remember exactly how it's done in linear time. So let's put by here. Is prime dot resize y true if is prime i then we start with i times i j is at most is less than y we say that all these numbers are not prime then we also need to push it back into the primes primes dot push back of i now this is i'm sort of correct oh okay something Strange happened here, it's 50 plus a lot. 50 plus 50? D equals 2? No, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be that, uh, that much. This is definitely some misunderstanding. Why is I such a big number? Well, I need to add... Uh, I need, maybe I need to take percent 10. Okay, this wasn't fast. And this wasn't correct.
Let's look at our primes. Ah. This was dumb. One four twenty eight sixty one. Yes. Let's hope it's it's fast enough. Let's hope it's fast enough. Oh, the testing is not fast enough. Okay, problem C. Hiking. A traveler is planning a water hike along the river. So the river, we believe it is a straight line. Each of these locations is characterized by its picture picture skewness. The distance from the distance from the start equals xi and picture skewness equals bi. Travel traveler will move down the river in one direction. Okay. Wants to cover the distance L. Oh, how come? Well, possibly I needed to start from the ending, so I needed to start from the last digits and end with the first digits. Isn't it disgusting? It is a bit. Okay, let's start from the last digits and then end with the first digits. Is it really such a slow procedure? Let's look at something. For example, nothing here. Yes, it takes a while, but not so much. Okay, took. Okay, I am, I am in debug. I'm in debug. I have three seconds, and I did it in debug. So if I do it in release, takes not nothing, really nothing. How can I speed it up? Okay, maybe I need to add one more dimension, which is the last digit. Let's add the one more dimen dimension, which is the last digit. I don't know what else can I do. What else I can do?
So let's assume that we know the last digit. So if V is the same, actually, V is the same, but we will have another array VVVI, VV, which will take into the consideration the last digit. And the last digit uh, dimension will be the first one or not. No. Yes, the first one. So V So VV dot resize ten. Then I take VV I. What do I put here? Here I put I have here three dimensions. So I have I have here last if we have four dimensions then it is last digit then it is the length of beginning then it is uh beginning itself and then it is index. So it is ten and D then I resize V V I J with a vj dot size yeah so with the size of this beginning what's wrong with you Four times V is three times V. Right. So now I need to iterate over all numbers. Then I iterate over all numbers in V, J, Beb, and I simply put it into V, V, I percent 10, J, Beg, dot, push back. Nice. So here, let's find dance cleverly again. So I have a, I have V. I have two string and dot size, and for example, I have also the last number. The last 
digits. So P is the last number. Again, we need this static sieve. What do we do here? If P equals zero, then we need to iterate over all possible numbers here. Okay, we need to find all numbers which begin with one and only consists and only consists of one, three, seven, nine. Okay. So if n equals zero, return true. If n percent ten is not one and n percent ten is not three and n percent ten is not seven and n percent ten is not nine, then return false. Otherwise return good of n over ten. Then also here if a dot size equals k again we return one or even at least k minus one. Okay. Okay, if k then return one. And now if at least k k minus one then also return one. Then here let's sort all numbers by the first digit, I think. Let's call them cool numbers. So cool numbers are parameterized by their beginning and their first digit. So if this is a prime number, so let's take its length. We should put it, so also cool numbers should be resized. Uh, like the length is it is less than d and the beginning is at most 10. So full numbers we take length we take i divided by pt of length minus 1 And we push back i. Mm -hmm. No, only if it's cool. Now we need to... Actually, th that's it. Yeah, but now we need to... Let's let's also make a vi of digits of p last digits. So if p equals zero, then we need to choose p and put them in the last digits. How do we do it? We iterate over full numbers of length k which start with a 
dot font percent 10. So we iterate over these cool numbers. So let's assume that we chose a cool number. Then we need to put its digits in a vector. And reverse. Then we need to return, no, not return, but add this to the answer. So A, K, P, L, D. Not, not P, L, D, but pp digits and return arms okay so here we need to iterate over our current number to do it it's done here actually first of all we also need to calculate the beginning so beginning is beginning times 10 plus this, I believe this is correct, actually. This should be fine. And now we take this time VV here. So first of all, we need the first digit. To take the first digit, we need to look in LD uh, A dot size. This is actually the last digit. Yeah, we know the last digit. The second thing is the same. What's wrong? See if VV. Oh. Okay, what's wrong with you? Ah, because it should be like this. It's fine, dance cleverly. AK PLG. And this is the answer for all ones. Okay, it's still correct. Is it faster this time? This time, this is less correct. This is unfortunate. So I don't want to check six, 61 cases. Four o one. What? Do we start with C with zeros sometimes? Ah, the prime numbers that are written not in the first row of the matrix may have digit zeros. Okay.
But still, the last row should be only ones, threes, sevens, and nines, because if there is at least one other digit, then this doesn't work. How do I check it, actually? Okay, let's try something. Uh, ants one, ants two. So here, let's in this function recursive. Let's. Let's push it to the answer one. And in the answer two, actually, let's make it with set. Can I do it with set? So, ans insert one, and in cleverly, we will ans two insert a. And here, we will say that we clear ans one and ans two. Then we calculate the answer. Then we calculate the other answer. Uh, then if answer actually if answer one is not answer two, then we Yes, and the same for the second answer. Let's see. Ah, okay. Okay, I need to fix it. So if this is true, I need to a dot push back here, then only I do it, then a dot pop back and return one. What's wrong with you? I already hate it. I already hate it because I spent a lot of time on both problems. Four o one two four o one two one hundred twenty seven Ah, this is because I needed to iterate over all digits. Well, well, I don't like it. I don't like it 
because this means a lot of bad things. Okay, then I don't know. Let's just iterate over all numbers, not only good ones. Okay, let's just return true, for example. And now it works, but does it work faster than before? Okay, let's let's ban ends one and ends two for for a bit, for a moment. So we need to return one here and just return one here. What else? Don't do anything here and don't do anything here. Maybe I can print the duration. Okay, let's print the duration. So now we print C year and we print C year again. Okay, finally, we need to make some interesting tests. To do it, let's just make some. Let's do like something like this. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's see. If it's slowed down, then it is dumb. No, it it is definitely faster. It's definitely faster. Okay, let's just not print anything of this. Does it work now? It works. Oh. And why did I spend so much time on this problem? Why is this problem exists? Mmm, Savili is clever because he solved problem C. I also should have done it.
Okay, we need to look at both problems C and D and choose what we solve because time is ticking. We need to minimize the relative total frustration, which is the total frustration divided by the total picturesqueness of all the rest points he used. The traveler's path must end in the farthest rest point, and he always moves down in one dire direction. So, uh, what is the length of his route? Uh, he can make as many, so he can do everything in one day. That's it. No questions asked. So, we need to find a subset of all possible points here, such that the sum of Rj minus the sum of Rj minus L apps square root over mm, over the total greatness. is maximized. So the first ob observation that I might might find is the following. So assume that we have the optimal answer. We have a, the, an optimal answer, and assume that this point is in the answer, but it is not the maximum in this sum. The maximum of all picturenessness. Picture. Picture, 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 So assume that it is not maximum picture skinness. In this case, uh, we can eliminate it. Yeah, if at least one of these numbers is big, we can eliminate it. Why is that? Because no, we ca we cannot. Can we? Well, if it is at least something times l, l then we can. Let's look at the other problem. Mother of Dragons. There are n castles in the Lannister Kingdom, and some walls connect two castles. No two castles are connected by more, by more than one wall. No wall connects a castle to itself. Sir Jamie Lannister has discovered that Daenerys Targaryen is going to attack his kingdom soon. Spoiler alert. I didn't watch anything but for the first season. Therefore, he wants to defend his kingdom. He has K liters on a strange liquid. 
what is ah liter is a measure of volume it wants to distribute that liquid among the castles so that she so the, so each castle may contain some liquid <sighs> What castle is like a polygon? Ah, it's a, it's a graph. Yeah, it is a graph. Okay. We have a graph. And in each vertex, there is some liquid. And each wall. gains x y strength and we want to maximize the total stability okay why don't we put just put everything on one wall why don't we put everything on one wall Why actually? Why don't we put everything on one wall? It's not actually a bad idea. Ah, I understand. Because it might be a bad idea. That's why. For example, if we have a complete graph, complete. So if I have at least one wall, I can always make the answer of r over 2 squared. What if I have a complete graph? What can I do? I can divide it by n. Put it in square and multiply by n times n minus 1 over 2, which is, to put it simple, r squared over 2n times n minus 1. So this is greater actually than r squared over 4, usually, because n minus 1 over 2n is 1 half minus 1 over 2n. Yeah, this is usually greater than uh, 1 over 4, or at least 1 over 4. Okay. But it is is it optimal to do it or not? Is it optimal to put the same weight in all three in all n vertices?
let's write some conditions. Yeah, so let's assume that we have two vertices, A and B. And let's assume that their vicinity is same. Yeah, so the total weight here is W. In this case, if I put here A and here B, then and here is also an edge. Also, there might be no edges. Let's assume that there are E edges here. Then for these two vertices, I get, first of all, for vertex A, I get AW plus BW and plus ABE. And that's why I would like here to have A equals B. Don't I? I would like to have A equals B because this is maximized in this case. Okay. Fine. So I solved the problem for the complete graph. But there are some other graphs. Not on the complete one. What do I do for them? For example, let's look at the graph without one edge. Yeah, so let's assume that there are n minus two vertices here and two vertices here. And I want to maximize the answer. In this case, actually, it doesn't matter. Do I know anything else? Well, n is at most forty. It look like it looks like I need to divide something by two and iterate over all subsets. But okay. So it doesn't matter. So if I have a uh, if I have several vertices which are an empty graph, but they are connected to the same set of points, then it doesn't matter. On, uh, only the sum of these vertices matter. Okay. So, I have some let, let, let's assume that I put In each vertex here, I put A, and in each vertex here, I put B. Then my answer is A squared times N minus 2, N minus 3 over 2, plus, for these two vertices, I have 2, N minus 2, A, B. Okay. And n minus two a plus two b is fixed, and I need to maximize this sum. How do I maximize the sum in these conditions? I think I need to say that b equals s minus n minus 2a over 2 and substitute it in this formula. Let's substitute it in this formula. See what it gives us. a squared n minus 2 n minus 3 over 2 plus 2 times n minus 2 times a times b. Which is n minus 2a times s minus n minus 2a. I already hate this idea, but let's continue. 
So n minus two can be uh, moved out. N minus two over two actually. So what do we have in the parentheses? A squared times n minus three plus so n minus two over two. Let's remove it. So it's two a times s minus n minus two a. Let's continue. A squared n minus three a squared plus two a s minus two a squared n plus four a squared n minus two over two times a squared times so this is one and this is minus a squared mi minus n okay and plus 2as so we should minimize we should ma maximize it to maximize a quadratic trinomial we need to take a equals minus b over a over a over 2a yeah minus 2 minus b over 2a which is in this case minus 1 minus n over sorry minus 2 s over 1 minus n which is 2s over n minus 1 but it's so b should be taken s minus n minus 2 a over 2 which is s minus n minus 2 over n minus 1 times 2s over 2 which is s times 2 n minus 1 n minus 1 s minus n minus 2 2 s ah so it's not here so it is minus 2 times n minus 2 minus n minus 1 which is n minus 3 s over 2 n minus 1 so if n is at most 2 yeah then it's simple i just do anything i want actually but if n is at least three then isn't it, it is impossible to take a negative b so i need to take zeros so actually in the complete graph i just need to take these vertices zeros and that's all i need so now i have a I have a hypothesis that I always need to take maximum click. I just need I just need to take to always take the maximum click. It just seems so. Is it true that I need to take to always take the maximum click? So in the complete graph, if I remove one edge, it is already 
inefficient to put anything there. Wait. It's not, it should it can be correct. It can be correct. I get it. I get it. There there is a problem with this reasoning. No, there is not a problem with this reasoning. Still... Maybe we need to prove it somehow. So we have a clique with the answer of size n and the answer, let me remember, s times R, R squared times one half times one half minus one over two n. So the question is, can I make it bigger? Okay, I think we need to take the complement. I need to need to take the complement and look. Okay. Let, let's take the complement and look at it. So now I have the following. I have sum over all edges uh, Px, Py. Oh, okay, this is my formula. Now let's take two times this and now it seems reasonable to look at the <clears throat> it seems reasonable to look at the complement graph so to say that it is P squared. Okay, let, let's remove this too. So this is P squared over where P is the sum of all PIs. So this is P squared over 4 minus sum PX, PY over the complement graph and minus sums of all i squares so now the question is i have sum of pi squares plus sum of pi pj something like this yeah and i need to minimize it, to minimize it, I just need to minimize it. So the question is, do I need just to take the maximum anti-click in this graph and put everything there? I need to minimize this number. Do I just need to take the maximum anti-click and put everything there? Okay, let's assume that I have some edge and both of its ends are positive. No, 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 it's over 4. 
to a four, of course. It is over four. No, it is over two. So it's two here and two here. Okay, I claim that if I have an edge, then I may assume that the sum of its ends is zero. Yeah, it's actually easy to prove because if I have pi here and pj here, then what is the function of these two numbers? Let's assume that their sum is s. Then I have pi squared over 2 plus pj squared over 2 plus pi pj because this is in complement graph plus pi times something plus pj times something which is constant in terms of pi and pj. The, in this case this is just s squared over 2 so this is just a linear function and in this case i may assume that i chose one of its ends yes yeah, so obviously uh, we just need an anti-click and if we need an anti-click we need the maximum one okay so the problem is i have a graph i need to find the maximum anti-click how it's done in this time how can I do it in this time? Do it in this time. I need What do I need? Oh, I don't like such problems, but okay. I need to iterate over all possible sets, independent sets here. For each of them, I use a bit set and find the set of vertices here. And here I find the maximum anti click. So I need the following, uh, how it's called, it's called, oh, it's called uh, Oracle. So for all set, I need maximum independent set in A. How it is done in this 20 set? For this, I need to check if it is independent, and if it is not, I need to re remove one vertex and check independence. Independence. Okay, I hate it, but it's it is kind of funny, or oh, uh, not funny, but it's kind of okay. Okay, let's find the answer, but. Oh my, oh my god, I don't like it. I already don't like it very much. So we need N and we need um, a JCC matrix. We need to remove this. We need to read the matrix. 3 and K, what is K? Uh, k is just a factor. Double. What is k? k is k integer? Yeah, k is integer. Yeah, we need to see out. Uh, set precision 30 and fixed. And we need here your money. Mm. Then we need 
Matrix. Угу. Пайнтанс В Н Н Кей Эй And for this we would like to have double we would like to have int find dance where int okay just find first of all we don't need n okay, here we need to find <clears throat> max click on of a okay let's assume that we found it it has n vertices in this case in this case the answer is R squared times n minus one over two n. So it's then says k times k. times n minus 1 divided by 2 k by 2 to n so now we have a simple question if not a problem then a question find max click Okay. I don't hate. I uh, I hate it. Actually, I hate. It. So let's divide it into two parts. Uh, the left part consists of n over two vertices, and the right part consists of the rest of the vertices. Okay. Then I need. For each subset of the left vertices, to find its maximum sub click. Also, I would like to prepare prepare it to pre to make the preparation. I need uh, I need ints. Mm-hmm. So let's iterate over all sets. First of all, we need to check if it is independent. How do we check if it is independent? Okay, let's make the vector of all possible neighbors. Let's take the vector of all possible. Actually, I should do it only for L, I believe. So let's put it like this.
So this B only works for the left part. So I need a vector ints, which consists of all possible left parts. And here I say the set of all endpoints of these sets. Also, I would like to have a CLZ. How do I find the CLZ? So I have static vector of CLZ. Uh, okay. See the finder of zero equals n, and then we iterate over all possible numbers here. So if this is a not number, then CLZ finder returns zero. Else CLZ finder returns one plus CLZ finder of the half of the number, and we return CLZ finder of n. And this is sad because in Visual Studio there is no built ins like this, and I need to write it. Okay, you i so first of all i say that ui is u let's find the clg okay so this is some vertex in my set i need to take the endpoints of all other vertices which is u of i xor 1 over j or equals b a b j okay then i need to check is it true that also i need lands of L. I don't want to write a function which also built in pop count, so let's just make a left ans. Okay, if, if what? If u i, no, 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 this is not correct. u i is just this or. So if UI is has empty intersection with I, this means that this set is independent. And if it is, then I say simply that lans of i equals 1 plus lans of y over j. No, 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 no. Okay, let's assume that it is not true.
then I will have to iterate over all possible Let's just make vi bits, which says while n and dot push back CLZ of n and n xor equals one to n put back and return ans. So now, so here we say just for int k in is key small? Yeah, 1000, it's fine. For int key 1000, and this is 39, so it's yeah, it's enough. For int key in mm, only what? In bits of i, lans i is just max of lans i and lans i xor 1 to k. Let's put parentheses, but I believe they are not needed. So, okay, I found all left ans answers. Then I need to iterate over all possible possible what? So I have the left half. Now I do the following. I take a set, check that it is independent find the set of vertices which are not connected with it and find the maximum dependent set there so i need the same procedure here let's do it let's actually do it we need to print the set no i don't need to print the set so let's do it like c R R R plus L plus L C R R. So I need the same thing. For V, VR, starting with zero, so what do I do? I is my right set. So first of all, I check that it is independent, which is just taking not i, and if it's still not independent, then I need to do this. So And I say that independent is actually there should be not this, and here I should use else. So I need it to be empty. 
need to be I need this I need this intersection to be empty. Okay, so here we assume that it is empty. So if independent, then I also need to do something else. Or let's say that if not independent, we continue. Mm -hmm. <sighs> let's also make this array, which calculates the set of vertices in the left part, which are connected with us. Okay. Let's do it. We say that RL I is RL I XOR G or D J. So we also need a vector D, which will be put. here here we trade over I L here we just take J and here we put D then then we use it for every subset. Yeah, so we just say that the set of vertices we are know is this. Okay, now we need to find the current answer, which is the size of our set. So we need runs, actually. We also need runs, not only runs. So here we say that runs i is 1 plus runs i xor 1 over j. So current answer is runs i plus plus what? Plus runs of We take all vertices, which is 1 over L minus 1, and remove the vertices, which are already known. So, this. And we say that ANS is max of ANS and current ANS. No, 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 no. We need to print uh, to copy this test case. We need to remove this reading, and we need to copy the samples. So what's wrong with you now? A is undefined. It's it should be undefined. It should be V here. Zero and four. Okay, four is fine, but why zero? Didn't you find a click of size one? Didn't you find a click of size one? No, then bad for you because you should have done it. Okay, so here we have L is 1 and R is 2. 
and independent is true. Then let's also look at answer and current answer. Mm -hmm. So now we take only the second vertex. So what is VI? VI, the first should be zero here. Yeah. Runs should be one. Runs should be one and it is one. Independent should be true and it is true. And RL should be Ah, I need a click. I need a click. Oh no, I need not an anti click. I need a click. Okay, let's fix it. It's it shouldn't be hard. So I need a click in the left part. So how do I check? Okay, let, oh, fine, it is anti click. To find max click, let's just change the vector. So for, for in i equals zero, i less than n. Or I in j equals zero j less than n. If i is not j, then a i j is not a i j. Return find max anti click in a. Now it fails. But why? Because it looked into you, but it should have looked into me. Do I really need you? What is you? You is... Okay, you is not needed after this uh, line. So you is not needed. Yeah, because you is simply the set of known vertices like uh, here. Okay. Now it works, but I need to, I believe I need to make some other tests. Let's make some tests. For example, the easiest thing would be to run. What is the easiest way to, to check? So if I take, so the answer is k squared n minus 1 over 2n, isn't it? So I want to take k equals 2n because in this case the answer is just 2n times n minus 1. Okay, so I want to make a test where the, key, the click equals 4 so I need to take eight so that it is simply eight times three. So it's it should be twenty four. And now I remove one edge, example this one. This is not 24. What is it? What is it? What is the maximum click that it found? Four. It found four. But what's wrong with you?
Why seven? Why you put seven? It's, it's dumb. Okay, it's 24. Now I need to... Let's add this one. What, what is the answer then? 25.6? Is it true? It's like 8 times 8 times 4 over 10. Do we believe it? In it? Yeah, we believe in it. Let's also make a couple of other tests. So with zeros and also with zeros like this and with zeros like this. No, with zeros like this. It all should be the same. 24, 24, 24. Let's try it. Although it might be slow, I really need to make a big test. Oh, okay. 20. 40. I believe it should be max test. There are of course some branch predictions which make it a bit faster. But still... What? Why is it instant? What? Why is it instant? It really shouldn't be... Okay, let's check one more. Because the answer is correct. This time I would like only zeros. This time it's zero. Let's add one edge. And it should be... What? 400. Why? Because it is... The squared over 4. Yes. Okay. Okay. I don't mind. If it works, it works. Wrong answer, test 3. Wrong answer, test 3. This is my prediction. It's not, it's not wrong answer, test 3. Ah. Okay. Now we need problem C. And this is some crazy dynamics, dynamic programming. Which I don't like. So we have zero, we have uh, R, which is, ah, which is the rightmost point actually. And we have several points, each of them has... Okay, let me pause for a while. I will think. Okay. We have several points on this line with coordinate xi and... Okay, let's call it beauty. Pi. It is already MP, although it is called Picture skewness, it is bi. 
So I'll, I'll call it beauty. And we want to minimize the sum. Um, yeah, minimize the sum. Square root of b i plus one minus b i minus l modulus, and the sum is divided. By the total bi. No, so it should be xi here and it should be bi here. Oh, this is some convex hull, isn't it? <clears throat> so let's check. That answer is at least is at most alpha. So we would like to find out if it is possible to have the answer at most alpha. So we would like to check if it's possible to have some of all these square roots at most alpha times sum of bi. And on the prefix, the only thing that interests us is sum of square roots minus alpha sum of bi's. So on each prefix, we just want to minimize it. And that's it. Okay. Only one second, though. Only one second though, but okay, <clears throat> let's do it. So first of all, we read N and L. Then we read X and B. And then we read, so we read uh, the, uh, X and B, and we print, we just print the answer.
Uh-huh. Okay, and here we uh, find the answer. To do it, we just make a binary search. What are the borders? The minimum possible. Answer is zero. Maximum possible answer is What is the maximum possible answer? Okay, the maximum possible frustration is simply N. No, it's not N. Okay, L. <clears throat> it is L and minimum possible picturesnessness is one. What if it ah yeah one? So it just L. While well, I don't like it. Okay, we take the current ones. We check that <clears throat> is it true? That we can Get such a bad end. Okay, so if it is empty, then we cannot. So actually, mean ants should be a current ants. Else, <clears throat> we 
uh, we say that arms dot swap of a and max arms equals current arms. Finally, we return <coughs> a. And here we need to return try ends. Try ends given these two numbers. Mm -hmm. Let's think. So this can be done quite in quadratic step, in quadratic time. How do we do it in quadratic time? So we trade over over all points and for each point we will find the best way to get to it <coughs> um so the best way to get to it let's just iterate over them so let's call this thing uh our fine we want to minimize our fine okay so we say that we have vector double fines <clears throat> so let's take one let's look at one step <clears throat> okay so first of all we say that Mm. Let's also make vector int pref, which says from where we should go to this vertex. Yes, first, first of all, we say that for n of all vertices is minus one. Minus one is the beginning, and ans is. We say that that ans i is. Uh, the square root. Actually, I think we will need to recalculate all square roots. Ah, it's. Is it, an, is it okay to recalculate all square roots? I think it can be fine. Uh, dun dun dun. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, we did it. Uh, then we put here pi dot second. No, we have x and b, and we need to put. And here we return
this thing. And here we put first minus d times I'd like to call it alpha minus alpha times uh, pi dot second. Okay, now we go through all possible continuations which are from zero to i and we say that ans i is maximum or minimum not ans but our fine <laughs> finds i and what we take finds j and try to jump from j to i so we have pi squared t of p i dot first minus p j dot first uh, and l then we subtract alpha times p i dot second mm -hmm. actually i think we will do it in the end So we say in event it finds i minus equals this. Okay. Uh, and we need to replace it. So here we need to calculate double fine equals this. And instead of this query, we say that if fine is less than fine's i, then we do it and we replace the answer. So we say that previous of i is j. <clears throat> okay, and here we say that oh, ans dot push back. So first of all, we say if fine's dot back equals is greater than zero then we return nothing otherwise we say the chance dot push back n minus one and while ans dot back is at least zero ans dot push back pr ans dot back okay then return ans. Here we return ans. Mm -hmm. And the time is over. Yeah. Five four two one zero. Ah, okay. I need to ans dot pop back and reverse the whole ans. I don't know, but let's check. Wrong answer on test 55. Okay, let's replace double with long double. Okay, I, I hate when I don't know what to choose because it could be tail without that. Who am I to disagree? So here I use float, float, sqrt 
float. Do you know what a skirt of float is? I think you need this, yeah? Okay. Now float here. Now float here, float here. Float here. Here. Also, it took a lot of time, didn't it? 373 milliseconds. I think we cannot take such a big risk. What else can I do? Replace with this one? Well, I can. But... But will it help? Okay, we definitely have some problem. Oh. Okay, I felt the frustration here. I definitely felt the frustration. However, this is just a random sum of square roots. How could I do it without uh, the precision? Enough precision. Okay, let's do something between. In between. Can we do something in between? Yeah, we can take 3e minus 17. <clears throat> oh. What was I supposed to do? Excuse me. What was I supposed to do? So this is not the correct approach. So I need to find the total minimum, which is like very accurate. Is it even possible? Maybe I need to use like one e minus nine here let's try it and also let's try it with less precision here no it didn't help at all 
Okay, what about minus? Okay, this problem. <clears throat> this problem. This nice problem. Will I ever be able to look at uh, the status? No? Only my status? So, is it visible what he is doing? What? Did we solve some sort of contest? Ah, maybe, yeah. So, Savelli is so rusty on Cutie Forces, he didn't do anything in several months on Cutie Forces. Okay, okay. Fine. Okay. Since I really don't know what to do in this problem, Let's just cut it, and if I feel like absolving, then I will absolve this problem. Thank you for watching.